Hello everyone, I'm Ashish Kashinath, a PhD student here at the University of Illinois. I'm here very excited to present our work, PAR Medic Physics Driven Fall Diagnosis for PAR Sensors. This is joint work with my advisor, Professor Sibin Mohan, my mentor, Dr. Akshay Nambi, and my collaborator, Sumukh Marathe. Let's get to the presentation. Passive infrared or PAR sensors are an integral part of modern living. They find multiple applications in modern buildings such as heating or lighting control, washroom facets, towel dispensers, and security alarms to name a few. However, PAR sensors are prone to failures. They suffer from failures during deployment due to multiple reasons such as environmental damage, incorrect installation, and component-based degradation to name a few. Today, we use heavily engineered approaches for fall diagnosis. These are typically data-driven statistical anomaly detection-based techniques, or they use auxiliary hardware such as cameras to validate PAR data. Consequently, this leads to significant infrastructure and management overheads that makes building automation expensive. A case in point here is our building shown, which comprises of four floors with 300 sensors spread across 244 rooms. To understand the impact of PAR sensor failures, we note that building data today is sent to the cloud for inference and higher level decision making, and faulty data implies incorrect conclusions and poor dashboards. In addition, faulty data also leads to the wastage of edge cloud network bandwidth, which is at a premium. Therefore, fidelity of sensor data is highly critical. All things considered, let's zoom out and look at our problem once again. The issue that we have is that PAR sensors fail often, with failures being manually inspected by building IoT technicians. These sensors are low in cost, large in scale, and are remotely deployed, often at inaccessible locations in a building, such as the one shown here in our room. Additionally, adding auxiliary sensors is not viable for low-cost deployments, particularly in deploy developing countries. Lastly, using data-driven heavy statistical techniques in the cloud is wasteful of network bandwidth. In other words, we ask, can we design an automated edge-based low-cost solution to detect and diagnose faulty PAR sensors? Stated alternately, what we desire is a completely automated fault diagnosis technique, one that is cheap, whereby rejects poor data at the edge, saving us network bandwidth, uses no extra sensor, saving us hardware cost, and can run on commodity sensors. This will give us an end-to-end -end solution. The key insight that we have is that faults manifest as deviations in physics and PAR sensors work on the physics of the pyroelectric effect. And if we can characterize this physical process, we, we can arrive at an edge-based solution, one that uses no auxiliary sensor and can run on commodity sensors because all PAR sensors use the pyroelectric effect. This will result in an end-to-end -end approach, one that considers both physics of the phenomenon, the sensor hardware going up the way to the sensor data itself. Let us look at the teardown of a PAR sensor, which is shown in the blow-up figure on the right. As you can see, a PAR sensor consists of the following four physical components going from top to bottom. First is a Fresnel lens, followed by an optical filter, followed by a pyroelectric element, all of which are mounted on an electronics baseboard. This design is commonly seen in commodity sensors across the board, such as Murata and Panasonic. Let us consider the sensor physics of a PAR sensor. Here, we have a human obstacle walking across the field of view of a PAR sensor, radiating thermal radiation. The thermal radiation is concentrated by the lens onto a pyroelectric element, which converts the heat radiation into an electrical signal. This electrical signal is then sent to an electronic subsystem comprising of a filter and an amplifier and a comparator. The output of the PAR sensor is digital in nature. In other words, it is binary. That is, it detects an obstacle or no obstacle. Note here 
that prior to the comparator process, there is an analog output present. This analog output contains additional physics information as it passes through the pipeline of lens, the pyroelectric element, and the electronic subsystem and can contain invaluable information. Now, let us look at these two outputs visually. The graph here shows voltage on the y-axis and time on the x-axis. We consider an obstacle passing periodically through the field of view of the PAR sensor. We plot digital output here in the blue color and analog output in the red color. We note here that the digital output jumps from 1 to 0 upon the detection of an obstacle. Whereas, if you look at the analog output more closely, it executes a U-shaped oscillation. Note that this U-shaped oscillation contains more information than just the zeros and ones of the digital output. And this is the key idea that we use behind the design of our solution, PAR Medic. Now, let's look at some of the failures that we observe in practice. These are pictorially shown in this slide here. The first picture contains the lens of the PR sensor being dislodged. The second picture contains the lens being covered with chalk dust. And we also see here uh, a case of a pyroelectric element being covered with an oil condensate. These failures are discerned by conversations with building IoT technicians and field engineers. And we classify these into a five class taxonomy, the details of which you can find in our paper. Now, let us look at the physics of failures in the time domain. The top graph contains the voltage plotted against time for a normal sensor, whereas the bottom graph contains the voltage against time plotted for a faulty sensor whose lens is dislodged. We see that the faulty sensor here has a false positive, that is, it detects an obstacle when there is actually none. Some time later, the faulty sensor shows a false negative, which means it misses an obstacle completely. And further down the line, we see that the faulty sensor behaves similar to a working sensor. And thus, failures can lead to both false negatives and false positives. And thus, detecting such failures from the time domain is extremely challenging. So we look at these failures in the frequency domain. Consider here the case of a sensor with its lens cap dislodged. And on the right, we see a graph of the analog output plot plotted in the frequency domain. We see here that the obstacle detection bandwidth for a sensor with the lens dislodged reduces. And the peripheral frequencies are also attenuated significantly in relation to a normal sensor. And this makes sense because with the lens dislodged, there is improper focus of the thermal radiation onto the pyroelectric element, and the field of view of the PAR sensor becomes more narrow. Now, let us consider the case where the lens is covered with chalk dust. We see here that because of the chalk dust, there is some absorption of thermal radiation, and at the same time, there is a degradation of response at the periphery of the frequency spectrum. And this makes sense because the absorption and dispersion caused by the chalk dust leads to a reduced amplitude and uh, attenuation of, uh, of the signal in the frequency domain. Thus, we note that monitoring the A out signal can help us identify the different faults in the PAR sensors. With this in mind, we develop our solution known as the PAR Medic Framework. Our solution consists of uh, a PAR sensor the outputs, both the analog and the digital output, are sent to a microcontroller or a real-time signal acquisition device. And this is then sent to a processing device where our PAR Medic framework resides. The, the framework consists of a feature extraction uh, uh, module, a feature dictionary creation module, as well as a fault detection and diagnosis module. The output of the PAR Medic framework is the class to which the sensor belongs to, that is, if it is working or faulty, along with the type of fault, if applicable. All the components here are commodity of the shelf components. Now, let us look at the PR Medic framework in its training phase in much more detail. Here, 
we collect A out for a working sensor and one faulty representative sensor per class. We extract its features by splitting it into time windows and computing time and frequency features. This process is typically repeated for a duration such as one week, following which we perform feature pruning and interpretation using the Benjamin Hotchenberg feature pruning and Schaap value interpretation. The details of this process can be found in our paper. We use this to create the feature dictionary that is then stored on our processing device, the Raspberry Pi in our case. In the deployment phase, we collect field A out and send it to a random forest classifier, which tells us whether the sensor is working or if the sensor is faulty, along with the class of fault. The inference latency for the framework is 60 seconds at 20 hertz sampling frequency. 20 hertz sampling frequency because human motion is often restricted to 10 hertz, and the factor of two comes from the Nyquist sampling theorem. We also tested PR Medic using practical real-world deployments using 15 sensors over three months, consisting of a set of five working sensors and two faulty sensors per class. The deployments are as shown here in the elevator of our building, the lobby of our building, as well as the queue of a local Starbucks coffee shop. We'll consider the Starbucks deployment here for the sake of brevity. The deployment consisted of some sensors which had their lens dislodged, some which had their lens deformed, some which had dust deposited on their lens, some which had oil condensate on their pyroelectric element, and some of them which were working. As shown in the table here below, so the faulty sensors missed obstacles during the course of its deployment, and we validated this from the ground truth uh, using a working sensor. We collected the A out signals from each of these uh, sensors and sent it to the PAR medic for classification. And the, P the label predicted by the PAR medic here is shown uh, in relation to the true label of the sensor. The high values of, along the diagonal of the confusion matrix shows that PAR medic is able to detect and diagnose faults in PAR sensors. Once the faults have been detected, PAR Medic can also perform fine grain classification of lens faults. And this is useful typically when lens is obstructed by different foreign materials, each of which have different thermal absorption properties. So we consider here uh, a set of uh, sensors with their lens covered with paper, some with their lens covered with tape, and some with dust on their lens. If we plot the frequency spectrum of the analog output here, you see that there is a, a, a deviation between the frequency responses caused due to each of these obstructions. If we send these analog outputs to the PAR medic framework, the PAR medic framework is able to predict the label of the sensor to a high degree of accuracy and is able to distinguish between each of these uh, causes of lens faults. Thus, PR Medic can detect and diagnose fine grain lens failures. In summary, PR Medic is an efficient physics based end to end fault diagnosis for PAR sensors and it uses an intrinsic signal present in all commodity PR sensors. PR Medic improves data quality from PR sensors in the face of failures and each checking takes under one minute at 20 Hz sampling frequency. We validate PR Medic on practical deployments using commodity sensors. Some of the larger learnings from this work is that the quality of data is critical to the reproducibility and long-term success of building deployments. Additionally, insights from physics can aid algorithms and system design for our community. And other examples of physics being piezoelectric effect and thermoelectric effect, the latter of which we can find in, in use in a flow sensor. We learned a lot from the conversations with building technicians and field engineers, and conversations such as these can help us researchers understand the pain points in building deployments. Thank you. We would like to thank the various organizations we are affiliated with, as well as the facilities managers at the Coordinated Science Laboratory, this local Starbucks coffee shop, as well as the Illini Union Student Center. Thank you very much for your time, and I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you.